Hello again, fellow YouTubers. Sol and Pleasant here for Team OMG Vanguard with Card Fight Vanguard Clan Analysis Review thing. And today we have Spiker Brothers, or Spike Brothers for those of you who do not put accents on everything. So, Spike Brothers game is simple. Rush the field. Rush is the big word of the day, and you're going to hear that a lot when we talk about this clan. Now, Spike Brothers being the first of the Dark Zone, and was the only Dark Zone to be in set one, Spike Brothers have been around for a while, and they are my second favorite clan. I'm going to flat out say they are second favorite easy. Because they have very interesting artwork, because they are mainly inspired by American football teams and that kind of stuff. They're kind of... The whole Blood Ball, Gallows Ball, whatever you want to call it, they haven't really determined what's what with that, but basically their whole idea is they're a crazed football or soccer, depending on where you're from. They're a crazed team of sports fanatics that just tank the field and beat stick everybody, and that kind of goes along with how they play in card fight. So, Spike Brothers, the idea is simple. Power up your units, rush with them, send them back to the deck. And some people are probably thinking, why would I send high power units back to the deck? Well, when I go further into explaining spike, a Spike Brother deck, because the thing with Dark Zone clans, except for maybe Gear Chronicle, but I, we'll get to that in a different vi video, but the thing with a lot of Spike Brother clans is... Yeah, the thing with a lot of Dark Zone clans is that they don't essentially have multiple archetypes and multiple ways of playing decks. Like, they just have a core deck mechanic, and then you can alter certain cards and alter it in certain ways to play to your style. Because starting in this video, from here on until we get to Stargate, like, most of the Dark, the dark Zone, Megalantica, and Zoo Clan... Zoo Nations don't really have, like, specific archetypes or specific ways of playing, except for a given few, Mega Colony being one of them. You're gonna hear Rush a lot in this video. Anyway, before my internet crashes again, let's just talk about the history briefly with Spike Brothers. Season 1, Spikes. They're there, and you have your essential units. You have your... We had our AK, our Baraki, and our Juggernaut. Those were our big three, I remember. And there's probably one other one that I'm forgetting. And then we get into Onslaught, and that's when Spikes get a little more support, and you start to get our first deck. And I'll talk more about how Spike Brother, the Spike Brother deck evolves in, in a little bit, but first, just kind of history. Uh, again, Season 1, Kyo Yahagi, big user of Spike Brothers. His idea was simple. Get out units, and then punch with them. Which is what Spike Brothers play as. So he is a valid, like... Unlike a lot of other characters in the show, Kiyoya Hagi is actually one of those characters that... Ah. Uh, he's, he's one of those characters that, you know... Only loses because the plot demands that he loses. He's one of those characters. Um, his initial Season 1 setup was... Have grade threes that say, hey, whenever I attack and, like, manage to do something, I can get out other units to continuously send in waves until I either run out of a hand or my opponent guards, which is a very valid strategy for Season 1 Spikes. Season 2, Spikes got a little more support, and especially with, their, with the adding of Dudley Emperor, which we'll talk about him separately, but... Adding him into the mix makes, made Spike Brothers a very valid and very deadly deck to play against. Season 3 rolls around. We get a little bit more support that makes Spike Brothers even more advanced, the break ride being the essential one there. Then we get to Season 4, where Spikes be, get le their mandatory Legion, and the Legion kind of does its own thing, really. At the same time, like you can use it with the break ride, but really a preference base on that. And then we get into Season 5 where we have a couple stride units that there's one essential one that we need to talk about. So, over the season, Spikes kind of have faded from obscurity in the show, but they continuously get support. They get the support they need. They don't essentially get, like, a crap ton of support, but they get the support they need. Spike is one of those... Spike Brothers are one of those clans that gets, like, 
support pretty much once per season, but when they do, it's usually very good. And there's usually like one or two cards that everybody just adds to the Spike deck, making the deck much more advanced. And something you'll notice with Spike Brothers is that they will constantly advance as the seasons go on. And I will now talk about that in decks because when it comes to archetypes, yeah, you got Dudleys, but Dudleys are not full decks, so I can't really talk about them as an archetype. So, I'm just going to talk about how Spikes have evolved. Season 1 Spikes. Their idea was simple. Get Seafried out, use Skydiver and Juggernaut to continuously send in waves of powerful attacks. Skydiver supplied more attacks, Juggernaut supplied the power. And Juggernaut is something, again, we'll talk We'll talk about specific cards. There's going to be a lot of grade 3s in this video that we'll talk about because Spikes have a really good grade 3 setup. They really do. Um... Season 2 Spike Brothers, we got Dudley Emperor, and Emperor decided, you know, instead of banking on chance, like how Devil Summoner and Seafried and Skydiver banked on that whole chance thing of getting out grade 3s and then hitting in order to get out more waves, let's use our Counter Blast to just get out more waves automatically. And Dudley Emperor, by far, is the one, cl one card in Spike Brothers that most people will either respect or fear because of how well he works. He will send out wave upon wave of attacks as many times as necessary. And he will continue to do this until he's out of Counter Blast and your opponent's dead. <laughs> season 3 rolls around. And when Season 3 came around, here was the idea. Hey, we have Bad End Dragger. Let's use that as the break ride, and then just run to the Emperor with that to get off one of the most devastating combos in Spike Brothers, if not the game. And again, we'll talk about these specific cards in their own little thing, but again, just kind of going through deck. Season 4, we got Spike Brother Legion. Legion's idea was simple. Let's take Emperor and just become Legion about it. That was kind of the idea. The Emerald Blaze Legion basically is the Dudley Emperor Legion that we should have gotten but never got because Dudley Emperor decided not to get Jack. And the Ogle Legion is something I really don't like talking about because the Ogle Legion, in my opinion, is not the best. Like, it's a nice little combo, but it doesn't get out as many units as I personally would like. But the Ogle Legion basically says, use useless counterblast, Legion more, and bank more on the fact that you Legion in order to... Oh, God and bank more on the fact that you're using Legion in order to get off that Rush skill. And when I, I've already talked enough about Legion and how I don't like cards that bank on the fact that you Legion in order to get off your skills. Whenever I see something that says, when you Legion, that really annoys me. Or when I see cards that say, if you're in, actually cards that say, if you're in Legion, those type of cards say, hey, Legion, so that you can continuously do this effect, you only Legion once. That I'm kind of okay with. When I see units that say, continuously Legion to continuously do this skill over and over, that gets really annoying because then you're basically forcing people to say, hey, I need to Legion, I need to keep spamming my guard, and that really is not how the game should be played. Anyway, so... I really do not like the Ogle Legion, and the Emerald Blaze Legion, in my opinion, is eh. And then we get into Season 4, and at the most, Spikes have two Stride Units, and that's all they've gotten. But, we'll get into that Stride Unit that I really want to talk about in a minute. So, let's just kind of talk about Trigger setup. When it comes to Triggers, here's how you run Spikes. Four crit, wait, a crit, four draw cancel. 8 crit, 4 draw, 4 heal. That's how you run spikes. There really isn't much of another way to run spikes. Anyone who uses a stand in spike obviously is not a spike player. Never use stands in spikes. That's a rule. Second rule, don't run more than... Like, you can kind of balance out your crit and draw if you want to get more draw in your hand, which I've seen some spike decks run out of hand, so draw triggers can be nice, but... At the same time, I still like the idea of 8 crit, 4 draw, 4, four heal. It's a very nice setup, it's a very nice, con very consistent setup, and that's really how you run spikes. There really isn't any other way to run it. Again, if you use stands, you are an idiot. 
Um, and when it comes to pea guards with spikes, you it really depends on how you play. I see a lot of Spike Brother players use like three pea guards. Three seems to be a nice number. When it comes to pea guards with spikes, a lot of people run. Okay, yeah, I'm just trying to recoup from the fact that my internet crashed again. All right. I don't like the idea of running multiple P guards in a Spike Brother deck. Spike Brothers is one of those decks that I feel you can get away with being cheap and not running P guards. Like, you do not need to run P guards in a Spike deck, because Spikes have this idea. Rush. So, why would I play defensive when my whole concept is rushing and going for the face? Why would I do anything else? Now, I can understand, hey, I still need some protection, but at the same time, it's Spikes. Who cares if you take damage, because as long as it's not 6, you're fine. Anyway, I don't really understand the purpose of running multiple P guards in a spike deck. Do I completely not say, like, don't do it, it's taboo? No. I can understand why you would want to. I would personally prefer running a deck where you're more aggro and you're less heavy on needing P guards. People who run, like, 4 P guards to 3 P guards, I just kind of look at that and I'm just concerned. Because I feel like it makes the deck a bit more... It, it makes it less rush, and Spike Brothers are all about the rush. So, whenever I see someone that isn't running a rush for Spikes, and they use P-Guards like that, I'm just like, hmm, I don't know, man, you could be filling that void with other cards, like Wonder Boy, Reckless Express, or, you know, other, th or other tech guards like Machine Gun, or Deadly Phantom. Anyway, let's talk about a specific size zero. Now, I would talk about Mecha Trainer, but everybody knows Mecha Trainer. Mecha Trainer is the big card that's just like, hey, I'm Conroe, except I'm not banned. So, I'm going to talk about Rantara Thermidor because I still think it's a very valid grade zero and it's a very valid unit to run in a Spike Brother deck. A, if you don't have Mecha Trainer, or B, you want to try something different. How Rantara works Boost the Spike Brother, give it plus three. If you did, it goes to the deck at the bottom, goes to the bottom of the deck at the end of your turn. I don't... People give this card so much crap, and I don't know why. This card basically says, hey, your spike... Hey, you have a spike brother unit that isn't Reckless Express, High Speed Baraki, or Juggernaut Maximum? Hey, I just gave it plus three and turned it into one of those without a soul blast. Also, I'm boosting it already, so you basically get plus eight. Without a soul blast. So, why does everyone hate this card? And I think the main reason why people hate this card is because it stays on the field, and and a lot of like old hardcore Spike Brother players who, for some reason, use, use three P guards and don't do fully aggro, really don't like keeping cards on the field. Spike Brother is a clan where you usually don't like having cards on the field, and I'm not like discrediting Mecha Trainer. Mecha Trainer is awesome. It's a really good. It's a really good starter. Reign of Terror is also good. It is also a good starter to have because it allows you to bounce units that can't normally bounce, such, such as Treasured Black Panther, Dudley Mason. Um, say you don't have a counter blast for your for your Frozen Ogle. Hey, I can bounce you back anyway. Any of your cards that can't bounce back by themselves or don't have the means to bounce back, Reign of Terror just gave you plus eight and allowed you to do it anyway. So. I think, again, the main reason why people think this is a bad starter is because it sticks on the field, and Spike Brother players usually don't like that, but I think it's an okay and a very valid starter. And I probably have a deck profile at some point. I should probably start doing those at some point to kind of explain how I run my Spike Bro deck. Anywho. So internet willing. Moving on to grade ones. Now, when it comes to, when it comes to the rest of the grades in this, in the Spike Brothers, I'm just going to talk about big Spike Brother cards that most people know and kind of explain how Spike Brothers work. First off, Dudley Dan. His skill, Counter Blast 2. If I boost his Spike Brothers Vanguard, I can call something out from the rear guard, from the deck to rear guard. And then at the end of the turn, it, I'm trying to think. No, nope, you just call to rear guard and then shuffle your deck. This was this is kind of a staple in a lot of old school Spike Brothers decks, and the only reason it's here is because I don't necessarily want to talk about Express. I'll talk about Baraki and then kind of explain that whole grade one, two, three setup. So I'm mainly talking about Dan here because 
Dan is a tech card that you can throw in if you want to throw your throw your game off, um, throw your opponent off a little bit. Why is this not an alt art? I would like to see this as an alt art because this looks nothing like the card we have. Bushy Road, get on that alt art now. Also, uh, just a thought, um, because I've always thought about this. How in the ever-loving God does this thing get its helmet on? How in the ever-loving God does he get his helmet on? I would love to know how he can do this. I would just love to know, because those horns are attached. So I'd love to know how he gets his helmet on. I'd really love to know. But again, alt art for this. Be really awesome. Anyway, so Dudley Dan is one of those that... Not many people use, but I still, like, kinda see a purpose for him, if necessary. And again, Reckless is not on there, because I'm gonna talk about Baraki. Yeah, that's our two, Baraki. And I'm not talking about Mason, because I talked about Dan. Uh, just to kinda, because Spike Brothers like to share this idea, so... Other tech cards that you can run. Machine Gun, basic, Machine Gun Gloria basically says, Counterblast 1, um, when this unit boosts a unit, Send that boosted unit back and draw a card. That's nice. Mago Manager is your Soul Charge. Wonder Boy is your 8K. Reckless Express is your Baraki. We'll talk about Baraki in a second. Um, Phantom is your 10K booster that bounces back himself. Um, Marilyn's your P Guard, I believe. I'm trying to think if there's anyone else I'm missing. And Dudley Dan's your other tech card that you could possibly run if you wanted to. Dudley Dan basically says, hey, get out a free unit, and I'm basically Dudley Emperor, except a little bit weaker. So, talking about grade twos, before I talk about Baraki, other things to consider. Devil Summoner is a very interesting tech card. He's a 7k that basically says, call out a unit if it's a grade one or two from the, like, look at the top card. If it's grade one or two, call it out. Very interesting tech card. Um, Panzer Gale is a nice, interesting tech card. Uh, special Interceptor for, special 10k Interceptor. Treasured is your 10k. Silver B Silver Blaze is a Legion-based unit that says Soul Blast. I get plus ten if my if my unit's in Legion. All right. Um, just trying to think if there's anyone else. Jumbo's an eight K that says I Soul Charge and Soul Charge and Unflip. Um, Frozen Ogle is basically a Counterblast version of Baraki. And Mason is basically Dudley Dan except a nine K and Counterblast one, and I have to hit. And Blow Kiss is a Soul Blast 2 and shoot a rear guard uh, in the front row. So, all that aside, you can look most of those up on your own because Spike Brothers is, again, a very clan where you have your specific core units and then you have other stuff to fill in. Uh, High Speed Baraki is a core unit. And I'm talking about Baraki now, I'll talk about Maximum in a bit, but... Reckless Express is basically a 7k version of Baraki. High Speed Baraki is a 9k that's a Soul Blast. Give this unit plus five, at the end of the turn, it bounces back to the deck. And then you shuffle the deck. So, Reckless Express, High Speed Baraki, and Juggernaut Maximum are all very important units. It's, those three make up this part of your... It's basically a ride chain, almost. Except you never ride them. Except maybe Reckless Express, you can kind of ride him, because he's kind of a... He's kind of more of a unit where you just kind of use him for desperate measures. And high speed, you can sometimes ride him. It's better to ride Mason because Mason is a very good Vanguard rearguard unit. This is a specific rearguard unit. Baraki right here kind of sums up Spike Brothers. Soul Blast to get power, and then punch your opponent in the face, and then run. That is how Spike Brothers work. And they... Cancel. And the thing with Spike Brothers is a lot of their effects require like a Soul Blast 1, which is why when I look at Dark Zone, there are three, the three Dark Zone clans that actually use the Soul, Gear Chronicle, um, use it like this. Dark Erangs use their Soul like a generator and just keep charging up power. Pale Moon use their Soul much like a box and pretty much just send their stuff in and out and just kind of swap their stuff and manipulate their Soul. And then you have Spike Brothers who use their soul like a gun and simply fire off small rounds and get mounts of power to rush, rush, rush. That is Spikes, in a nutshell. Use your soul like a gun, open fire. 
And again, other cards you should probably consider. And another big staple right now is Dudley Mason because he's basically Dudley Dan except better. So pretty much, I'm just gonna kind of explain kind of how a Spike Bro deck works uh, before I talk about grade threes. Your zero lineup is this: four heals, eight crit, four draw of your choosing, and then run a and then run a grade zero. Per my personal preferences are Rain of Terror Thermidor or Mecha Trainer, those are the big two that you probably will consider. Your Grade 1 lineup will consist of Wonder... should consist of Wonder Boy, Medical Manager, Reckless Express, and then your tech card. My personal tech card is Dudley Phantom. I like that extra power. You can run in other stuff. Um, I run a, I run AP Guard because I have AP Guard, so I'm gonna run it, but... I don't run too many P Guards. I don't consider running too many P Guards, but... This is turning too much into a deck profile, but your big units are Express, Wonder Boy, and Medical Manager because Medical Manager gives you your soul, Wonder Boy is a good 8k beat stick, and Express is a nice soul blaster to give that plus 5 core right there. And then you run in your other tech cards when you have because assuming you run 3 of each, you're at 9, so you have 3 more spots or 4 more spots for another tech card. How you run your grade 2s? Three to four Barakis, three to four Masons, and then you run in the rest of your tech cards. I run some Treasureds. Treasured is a good idea. If you're running a full Dudley deck, Doug, um, Monty is a good idea. <laughs> or is that Mori? I'm not sure. No, it's Monty. It's Monty. And then you run in your tech cards, uh, Blow Kiss, Devil Summoner, um, Field Driller, Field... Uh, Fierce Leader, um, Frozen Ogle, again, there's a lot of stuff that you could choose from. So, there's that. Let's talk about Grade 3s. So, I'm just gonna cover all the Grade 3s that are worth covering, and I'm just gonna go down the list, and this is gonna be the core of the review, because this is where most of Spike Brothers' big combos come from. Their Grade 3s really set up their combos, and... I talked about in my Murakumo review how I didn't like how Murakumos were so heavy on their grade 3s. The difference is this. Spike Brothers grade 3s help them combo with their other cards. Murakumo's grade 3s combo with themselves and no other cards. Except for Hiyaki Vogue, but I digress. Bat and Dragger, Break Ride. One of the best Break Rides in, like, second to third... Third to second best, only behind maybe Kalamatooth and maybe there's one other that I'm missing, but this is one of the best. Break Ride. Give plus 10 to your, your Vanguard, and give your Vanguard the auto ability of when one of your Spike Brother unit, units attacks, that unit gets plus 10 until the end of the battle, and it goes back to the deck. Also, if it boosts, it gets plus 2. Why is this good? Well, gee, when my front row is attacking and I have a way of getting more units out into the front row, that plus 10 is going to be an issue for anyone versing anything, using anything against spikes. Because Bat Cancel. Bat End says this, Oh, hey, Juggernauts, you are now 21k base, you are now 26s because you're going to Soul Blast, rush the field and take them down. And when you, when you combo this with any other grade 3, my personal preference is Dudley Emperor, that becomes deadly. And Bad End has been a staple in most Spike Brother decks, and I believe Bad End is one of the few break rides that survived the extinction of break rides. He's one of the few because Bad End is just that amazing with spikes. Because he essentially says, hey, give your units power and have them rush for more rush. It also helps units that don't bounce, such as Mason, Panther, all those grade 2s that can't normally bounce, helps them bounce, because that's nice. Let's talk about Lucifer, something that a lot of people like and I just really don't get. Demonic Lord Dudley Lucifer came in because everybody was kind of sick of just having Emperor's 10k instead of being an 11k, so we made Lucifer. His Limit Break 4 ability is choose one of your rear guys, put it into the soul. At the end of the battle, if this unit attacked a vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose up to one card from your hand, call to rear guard. If that unit has Dudley in its name, give it plus 10. It also has a counter blast ability of give plus 2. I don't know why that second ability is there. That's kind of stupid. Here's why Lucifer currently doesn't work. 
because there really aren't any, any Dudleys that I want to call out from my hand and give plus 10 to. I would prefer to give plus 10 to a Juggernaut, thank you. Or a High Speed Baraki. Or something that can get, a, or a Reckless Express. Or, you know, things that get additional power besides the 10k. I don't like Lucifer because he's specifically for Dudley units. And last I checked, Dudleys aren't a full deck yet. So, unless I get a Juggernaut clone that is a Dudley, I, that doesn't really benefit me. If I got an 11k unit that had Dudley in its name that basically said Soul Blast 1, give plus 5, and at the turn bounce this, that would be amazing. If I had a Dudley Juggernaut clone, a, Baraki du a Dudley Baraki clone, and a Dudley Express clone, that would make this card amazing, and I would not bash it whatsoever, and I would say, yes, you're good. You basically clean up my field so I can get more stuff in the soul, because you, Dudley Lucifer, can get soul. You can get a lot of soul very easily. And you actually can work with Skydiver, because if Skydiver hits, I put him in the soul and get something else out. If Skydiver doesn't hit, I can get him in the soul and call something else out. So, that works. So, this could work, but Dudleys are not a full archetype yet, so they, he doesn't yet. He will work when Dudleys have a full archetype. He will. I will say this right now, I don't think it's a bad card because it has potential, but until Bushy Road gives more, gives more, basically gives those Soul Blast 1, give plus 5 clones to Dudleys, it ain't gonna happen, and it's not gonna be the best way to run spikes. Some people still think it's good, I personally just think it's average. Uh, let's move on to a card I really do not like, and a lot of people don't like, because it's annoying. Because it's just there, and it's kind of bad. Ah, uh, Grateful Catapult. Now, T has gone on multiple occasions where he said, I'm totally going to make a spike deck and run Grateful Catapult. To which anyone else I know, and myself included, say no, just, just stop right there. Now, when you look at this, this wouldn't sound like a bad idea. Counterblast 2, and choose a card named Grateful Capital from your hand, discard it. When this unit attacks, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose two Spike Brothers, call them to, call them to open rear guard, shuffle your deck. Pretty much a Dudley Emperor clone, except for one big, two key issues. One, he is an 11k. That would assume that he would be better, right? No, because he specifically says, I need a copy of myself in order for me to work. Why is Dudley Emperor better? Because he doesn't need a copy of himself in order to work. And considering that you're gonna run... Less, uh, the way Spike Brother Grade 3s work is you run up to three of your boss unit, and then you cover the rest with units that work on rearguard, i.e. Juggernaut Maximum. So, since I can't do it at any point in time and I have to wait for a copy of Grateful Capital to show up in order for him to work, and I have to discard it instead of putting it in the soul. Like, if it said put it in the soul, I could, I would kind of understand taking that risk then. But, no. I don't want to discard a grade 3 when I can just use Emperor's skill to put that grade 3 in the soul. It, because if you haven't noticed with spikes, they kind of need soul in order to get off more power. So, discarding a card in spikes for nothing, essentially, for basically, Dudley Emperor's skill is really a poor choice. And that is why Grateful Catapult doesn't work. And people have kind of said, no, Grateful Catapult works, he's an 11k. Yeah, that 11k is really, really corrupting the way people think. Why Emperor worked, and why he still works, is because of this. Counterblast 2, put 2 in the soul, and I call out 2 units. I essentially pay 2 to have 4... to not only beef up my soul by two, but also call out two more units to the field to essentially get two more attacks. Why Grateful Capital doesn't work is you pay two to get out two units and lose a card. Why would I pay two to lose a card when I can pay two to put two cards to beef up my soul? Soul is important in Spike Brothers because they don't have a lot of soul charging, so anything that says put stuff in the soul, that's good. And you probably want to run it, except for some things like Skydiver, which you can't fade from obscurity, or have they? We'll talk about him in a second. But first, 
Actually, I'm not really going to talk about Juggernaut Maximum because I already explained him when I was talking about Baraki. Juggernaut is the 11k version of Baraki. Very simple. So let's just talk about Skydiver before we go on to the grade 4 that is definitely something to look out for. Skydiver has been an interesting card to say the least. What does Skydiver do? Well, he's an 11k, so that's nice. And he has the ability of put this unit into the soul. When this unit attack hits a vanguard, you may when this unit attack hits, hits, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose a spike weapon from your hand, call it to rear guard. This has always been a card that's interested me, because I feel like this could work, and I feel like with the Legion support that they got, and maybe the strat support they got, Skydiver's been one of those cards that people should at least test. I feel like people should test running Skydiver. Because, in all honesty, he's not that bad of a card. You get him in the soul, and get out another attack. Which, in Spike Brothers, is good because you want to rush. And Skydiver is nice at getting off that rush. You also supply soul that you can use more for Juggernauts. Why isn't he good? Because... He's also actually kind of good because, unlike Juggernaut, riding Skydiver on Vanguard isn't the worst thing ever. Because... Sure, he's an 11k, but he's one of those 11ks that you, you don't essentially need on rearguard. Whereas Juggernauts, you need on rearguard specifically. Like, if you don't have him on rearguard, you're pretty much screwed. So, Skydiver has always been something that interests me because I feel like it could work. It could work. It just is a really difficult card to throw, to tech in, and it's a really difficult card to work with because he has to hit. But, on the bright side, he has to hit something. He doesn't have to hit the Vanguard, which is nice. Like, if he had to hit the Vanguard, we'd kind of be screwed over. But the fact that he can hit a rearguard and essentially do the same thing is really nice because not only can you clear your opponent's field that way while rushing, you can also call out better units, which brings us to the biggest problem. One combo you could run with Skydiver is call him out, hit something, call, throw it in the soul, call out a Juggernaut. When... In all honesty, you could just call out Juggernaut and then throw Skydiver into the soul with Dudley Emperor. That's the problem with Skydiver. As my internet gives out, thanks. So, going back, Skydiver is a very... It's really hard to determine if it's good or not because it has... Like Lucifer, it has potential. The problem is that potential can't really be obtained because he isn't the best and isn't the most ideal. So, some, in some cases, it's even better just not to run him as opposed to just running more Juggernauts. So, it's really hard to determine, like, if he can... I think I have hope that he can be good. I think he can work, espe like, especially with Legion and the way the Legion works now and with the Grade 4, I think... He could become a unit that could work. And when I talk, especially the Great Four, because when I talk to you about him, Skydiver can become a unit that could work. It's just a really hard unit to work with, so let's just talk about the Great Four and then see if Skydiver may have a place back in Spike Brother decks because he was outcasted after Season 1. When Emperor, when the Emperor became a thing, it's just like, oh, just run Emperor and then we have Bad End. Yeah, anyway, so... Let's talk about this grade 4, because the other grade 4 isn't worth... Because you know what? Flash Burst isn't worth talking about. No one cares about you, Flash. Flash! Nah, alright. Great Warrior Dudley Geronimo. Now, I've been iffy on Stride, but if there was one card that could get me into liking Stride, this would be it. When I heard that... Like, every clan was going to get stride in Fighter's Collection. I was like, ooh, that means Spikes are getting two strides. And I was very disappointed with Flash Bruce. All my disappointment aside, let's talk about Dudley Geronimo. He has the stride ability... He has the act ability of once per turn, counterblast one. Choose a face-down copy of... Choose a face-down copy of Great Warrior Dudley Geronimo for your G-Zone. Flip it face up. If you have a heart of Dudley... So basically, if you strode on top of a Dudley unit, such as Dudley Lucifer or Dudley Emperor, because those are the only two grade threes you can stride on right now, it, so if you have Dudley in its heart name, until the end of the turn, this unit gets the auto ability of Vanguard. When your rearguard attacks, that unit gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the battle, 
and at the end of the battle, it turns to the bottom of the deck. So, Ogle, except without Legion, all right. When the number of face-up cards in your Jeet Zone is two or more, until the end of the turn, this unit gets the, uh, the continuous Vanguard ability of all your rear guards may attack a Vanguard from the back row. Okay, I'm liking this. So, before when I said Skydiver was hard to work with, this could help. Because, originally, you would have to call out, you would either call out Juggernaut and just forget Skydiver, or call out Skydiver, hope he hits, and then call out Juggernaut and essentially call out more Rush. So, instead of having that back row that boosts, you can just basically say, okay, Skydiver, Juggernaut, both of you, out there, both of you, attack. So, I can essentially, so instead of the Dudley Emperor final down combo of five heavy assault 10k attackers, I could have, so, I can essentially have one, two, three, four, five, six attacks, with five of them having plus five, so I can essentially call out, so, in a hand where I had almost nothing but great, so let's say I, like, call out two Juggernauts, two Skydivers, and... Or, you know, say I call out, basically, Juggernaut Baraki or Express Skydivers, I can essentially have, like, a minimum of... A minimum of 17, I think. So I can base Yeah, if I were to not have an ideal situation, either way, I have a minimum of a 12k attacker five times. Plus... The stride, which basically gives me either a 26 or 25k attack as well. So, I have six attacks. And if I combo that with Skydiver, and if Skydiver hits, I can have more than six attacks. Which is amazing. And if there are units that allow me to get out more units this way, I can go past six. So, I have a minimum of six attacks. For one counter blast. That's awesome. That granted I can only use this twice, but if your if your opponent survives 12 attacks, like you're clearly facing a deck that has way too that has like a ton of defense and you're just not gonna be able to win that uphill battle if they can survive 12 attacks of a minimum of 12 power. So you, Dudley Geronimo, are one of the reasons I may even consider Stride. Like, I wasn't even considering Stride, really, as, like, even considering it, but you, Dudley Geronimo, you have made me think about things. You actually had to make me think. Well played, Dudley Geronimo, well played. Like, God. <laughs> just because I can attack from the back row, that is just opening up a box to God knows how many things. And that's why I think Dudley Geronimo is a very valid unit and one to consider, so... so I mentioned before how Spikes are my second favorite clan. They are second favorite, easy. And I, I think, like, where would they go tier-wise? I consider Spikes very, very high mid to mid top tier, because they can punch you in the face, and they do not care how much meta you have. And this is why I say mid to top is because of how much Spikes can get over meta. Spike is one of those deck decks that really doesn't care if they're meta or not. They don't care if they're meta. They do the same thing very consistently over and over, and there's, the support they get is always consistently going to have something that's good. And one thing I will say about almost all the Dark Zone Clan in <coughs> Gear Chronicle is that the support they get in the original three Dark Zone clans, it's usually contained at least one or two good cards, and it's always managed to evolve and make it better. Dark Eggs and Pale Moon also share the spikes easily. Spikes don't get a lot of support, but the support they get is usually really good. Unlike some other clans who barely get support, and when they get support, sometimes it's crap. <clears throat> Murakumo. Anyway, so... A big thing with Spikes is, remember how I said that some people don't like having that those units are gone? Well, here's why it's good to have units leave the field. 
For one, Kagero and Link Joker are some of the most meta- Kagero, Link Joker, and Narukami are meta decks, and they focus on nuking and destroying your field. Well, that, that's nice, but... Uh, cancel. That's nice, but I don't have a field for you to do anything to. Because all my units already left. They keep going back to the deck, they keep rushing, they keep gaining power, punching you, and then leaving. So, like, when Link Joker first came out, I was like, okay, spikes are fine, because spikes pretty much leave the field anyway. And whenever I test spikes against Link Joker, spikes usually come out on top, because they Link Joker can't lock it. Kagro, oh, I blow up your, I blow up your front, your units. Oh, I don't have units for you to blow up, so I guess you kind of don't have abilities at this point. Narukami, I nuke your field. Oh, you have nothing to nuke. You maybe blew up like one or two units. Good for you, I guess. So, that's why spikes can be very high mid to medium top tier, because they can get over that huge part of the meta. Now, the thing where they kind of run into issues is probably with clans that either focus on massive defense or just just vanillaing it and tanking it as much as they do, as much as spikes do. That's where spikes come into a problem. Like, spikes versus royals, golds, or shadows are going to be an interesting fight because both kind of focus on a objective with the field, but there isn't going to be one advantage because, if, if anything, spikes will run out of hand, and that does make them kind of targeted to clans that can punch through defense very easily because spikes are not defensive in the slightest, so... Any clan that knows how to defend against spikes is gonna have an easier time beating them than, say, cancel. Than, say, like, Link Joker or Kakro. Cancel! So, overall, spikes, I think, are a very, very valid clan, and I think a lot of the Dark Zone is actually pretty valid with the support and just their decks overall. So, anyway, this has been Solomon Pleasant from Team OMG Vanguard with... The Clan Spike Brothers, and this is Solomon Pleasant signing off.